Hello everyone, this is Must Electronics. Today, we will learn how to interface the STM32 with a LiDAR sensor and display the distance on an OLED display. Let's go through the components needed. Jumper wires. Breadboard. 5 volt regulator. Adapter for the regulator. Nucleo board. Black pill. Lidar sensor. OLED display. Mini USB cable. The detailed list is available in the description below. Here, you can see the circuit diagram for interfacing the black pill with the LIDAR sensor. Connect 3.3 volt of black pill to V in of LIDAR. Ground to ground. PB9 to SDA. PB8 to SCL. PB3 to X shot. Let's start the hardware connections. Place the black pill and the LIDAR on the breadboard. Connect the output of the regulator to the black pill. Connect the LiDAR to the black pill as shown in the circuit diagram. Connect Nucleo for flashing which is explained in our previous video. You can watch it by tapping the link on top right corner. That's all for the hardware. Now, it's coding time. Open STM32 Cube IDE. Go to File, New, STM32 Project. Select STM32F411CEU6. Click Next. Enter the project name. and click finish. Since the LiDAR communicates via I2C, configure PB8 and PB9 for I2C1, SCL and SDA, PB3 as GPIO, output for the x shot pin. Enable I2C1, leave the rest of the configuration as is, Add the required GPIO label. And save. The code will be generated automatically. The code is already available on GitHub. The link is in the description below. Download and unzip the project. Copy the driver code.
open main.c and copy only the required content. Include the required LIDAR header. Ranging data is a structure which holds the final distance measurement from the sensor. This is an instance of the VL53L0X device structure. Dev is a pointer to the device structure, used by the ST-provided API functions. LiDAR init function initializes the VL53L0X LiDAR sensor and configures it for single shot distance measurement. These are temporary variables used for internal calibration processes. Waits until the VL53L0X finishes booting after power up. Initializes the sensor's internal data structures. applies static settings, like loading tuning parameters. Performs reference calibration, adjusts voltage and phase calibration for accuracy. Manages SPAD single photon avalanche diodes, optimizes which photodiodes to use for detection. Sets the sensor to single ranging mode, where one distance is measured at a time. Enables error checks, sigma, noise level and signal rate, strength of return signal. Sets minimum signal rate to 0.1 in fixed point format. Below this, measurements are considered unreliable. Sets maximum acceptable noise sigma to 60 helps filter noisy readings. Measurement time, higher budget equals better accuracy. 33 milliseconds is a balanced value. VCSEL laser pulse durations, adjusts timing for near and far range optimization. Assigns the I2C handle and the default I2C address 0x52 for the VL53L0X. Resets the sensor by toggling its X shut shutdown pin. This is necessary especially when using multiple sensors or initializing from scratch. Calls the initialization function we defined earlier. Changes the default I2C address from 0x52 to 0x62. Useful if using multiple VL53L0X sensors on the same I2C bus. Inside the loop. The I2C address is set again, for safety. A single ranging measurement is performed and stored in ranging data. We can now extract range millimeter from ranging data to get the distance. We first reset and initialize the VL53L0X sensor using the ST API. Then we configure the measurement settings like signal rate, sigma limit, and measurement timing. After that, 
we run single shot measurements in a loop and extract the distance in millimeters. The LiDAR API are in the driver's folder. Since the include paths are not configured yet, go to project properties C or C++ general paths and symbols and add the core INC and platform INC paths. Now let's flash the code and test it. Since we are reading the distance in the code, we can see the output using the debugger. Add the ranging data variable to live expressions to monitor values like distance in millimeter, signal rate, and range status. Note, the distance is valid only when range status is zero. Currently, it's not zero, so the reading is invalid. Once there is an obstacle, you will see the distance value and range status become zero. We can't always use the debugger, so let's display the distance on an OLED. Here is the updated circuit diagram including the OLED. We have already connected the black pill and the LiDAR. Now let's connect the OLED. VCC to 3.3 volt. Ground to ground. SCL to PA8. SDA to PB4 Now let's configure the OLED in STM32 cube IDE Configure PB4 and PA8 for I2C3 Enable I2C3 Change I2C speed to fast mode. Save the project. The related code will be generated. Go to the LiDAR distance on OLED folder that we downloaded from the GitHub project. Copy fonts.h and ssd1306.h to the INC folder.
copy fonts.c and ssd1306.c to the src folder. Copy the required OLED display code from main.c. Include the necessary headers and declare variables for the distance. Initialize the OLED. Check if range status is zero, and only then update the distance. Since the distance is in millimeters, divide it by 10 to convert to centimeters. If the distance is not valid, display invalid. Clear the screen before writing each time, then display the string distance, followed by the value in centimeters. If you see an error like float formatting not supported, go to project properties C or C++ build, settings, MCU, settings, and enable, use float with printf. The error will go away. Let's flash the final code. We don't need the debugger now so the debug board can be removed. Now we can see invalid when there is no obstacle, and the distance in centimeter when something is placed in front of the lidar. I have placed a measurement tape for reference. Today, we learned how to interface a LiDAR with STM32 and display the measured distance on an OLED. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more such interesting projects. Have questions or suggestions? Drop them in the comments. Want us to cover something new? Let us know, we'll try to include it in our upcoming videos.